Hi everyone, here you can see me putting the final touches on this 9x12 oil painting I recently finished. You may have spotted that my signature was already at the bottom left of the painting. This is a little psychological trick I play to help me finish paintings more easily. When I'm working on detailed paintings like this one, one of the most important aspects of the process is actually the part where I'm not painting at all, where I'm sitting back and examining the painting and really trying to get a feel for what details need to be added and what things need to be changed to bring the painting to the most appealing finished product. There are quotes attributed to many famous artists that all roughly mean the same thing, which is, an artist never really finishes a painting, they simply give up. Especially with such detail-oriented subject matter, it would be very easy to become obsessed with specific details and sort of lose the most important aspect of the image, which is capturing the overall presence and mood. So it's about finding a balance between detail and also making sure you don't overwork your art so that you maintain that sense of spontaneity and make sure that you hold on to that actual specific mood that you are trying to capture or um, create with your art as opposed to just sort of copying a photograph or making something that looks like a photograph. You may have noticed I'm actually able to rest my hand directly on the canvas even though this is an oil painting. In general, even for oil paintings, I work in several sessions, sometimes intentionally letting the whole painting dry to the touch in between sessions so that I can spend that important time looking at the, uh, the painting and planning ahead and giving me one or more opportunities to come back at my painting with a fresh eye and see what changes would really benefit the overall quality of the image. You may have also noticed a second ago I just blended some color I just placed on the canvas with my finger. While this sort of finger-based dry brushing method can work quite well to blend color into already dry paint on a canvas, I don't recommend it in general while you're doing oil paintings unless you really make sure you're using all non-toxic colors, which I am. So getting back to the point of my signature, during one of these sort of staring sessions where I'm just looking at the painting and planning ahead, once I realize there are only somewhere between five and eight steps that I really need to do to finish the painting, that's when I sign my name. It's sort of a promise to myself that the next time I sit down to work on this painting, it's going to be finished. I found this trick really helps for me to avoid procrastination and avoid sort of that psychological need to let go of a painting and call it done once you know that it really gets across everything you wanted it to without becoming too obsessed with any tiny little detail. And speaking of details, it's often during those moments where you're not painting that you can make one of the most important decisions, which is what details to actually intentionally leave out in order to better capture the sort of mood that you're trying to put forth. For this particular painting, I left out easily more than half of the actual branches that were present in the trees. While I needed at least a certain amount for the proper aesthetic and sense of realism and balance for the image, there was also very much a risk of going too far and copying the photograph too closely and ending up with a much more claustrophobic feeling than I wanted over the head of the viewer. It's important even with representational classical realist style artwork that the artist decide what to change and leave out and add in in order to better capture the actual mood or moment that they're trying to convey to the viewer. Standing there in the real world out in front of that church, there was an entire sky open before me and in front of and behind me. Whereas in the painting, you only have that one 9 by 12 inch image in this case to convey the entire world and the sense of the world around you. So if I closed up what was visible of the sky with thousands of little branches, it would have felt far more claustrophobic than being there in the actual scene. This is similar to how if an illustrator were drawing someone running, because they only have a single static image to convey the sense of movement, they would intentionally draw with much more exaggerated lines and angles and especially draw the character to be very off balance because that sense of being off balance is one of the ways that you can exaggerate the image to convey the sense of movement. 
In the case of this painting, I added more blue to the sky and the shadow colors as well as the rooftop to get across that sensation of cold winter air. I especially love paintings that do more than just capture subject matter, but actually create the sensation of this moment in time being captured and being able to re-experience this moment in time by looking at this image, even if it's not you that had the original experience in the first place. In the case of this image, a simple human's eye view, mundane perspective, creates that sense of familiarity and your presence there like the viewer is just taking a walk, taking a shortcut to go to this church. The blues are more blue to help the viewer feel that coolness in the air, in that moment, in that place. There are many fallen leaves on the ground, but none are falling in this moment. All are still and on the ground to convey that sense of still winter air. There are just enough bare branches up above to help you feel the presence of the trees and to remind you of the season without overpowering the painting and creating an unnecessary claustrophobic sense. Now that the majority of branches that will be needed are there, it's going to be a matter of looking around, carefully deciding what little extra details or tweaks to details will be needed to sort of make myself happy with the final image, making sure nothing stands out as being too sharp in contrast or not having enough detail perhaps not being enough in shadow or not having enough of a highlight on it to really pull off its, uh, its shape and its placement. At this late stage in the process, with most of the painting dry to the touch, I would often do very thin dry brushing layers of dark transparent colors to tint things or to deepen the shadow of things to uh, help play with the sense of depth and uh, form. You can see here these detailing, this sort of framing in the stained glass window was just too high contrast. The lights were too light. So I just used a dark dry brush to darken it all and reduce the contrast. And in the opposite direction, I added some brighter brights to that uh, sort of plaster or cement texture up under what, what looks like it was a bricked off window up high in the church near the branches. Sorry about the shaky camera here, I must have bumped the uh, tablet while it was during recording. So you can see I'm just w working around with uh, adding little fine details that I think will add to the overall appeal of the image. And now you can see I'm extending branches even more, specifically to make sure that I'm overlapping more aspects of the image to help create a more realistic sense of depth where uh, to create a nice sense of three-dimensionality to an image, it really helps when you have one thing that's closer to the viewer that overlaps the, uh, the, the form and the outline of other objects that are behind it in, or further away in distance. So that's specifically one of the things I'm doing is making sure that I don't have an image where it looks like I was kind of cowardly when I was painting the branches and intentionally not painting any naturally long branches just because I was afraid that they were going to cover up some of the uh, background stuff, some of the important subject matter I had previously painted. So it just looks much more natural when you've got branches that really extend into and beyond the other elements of the painting. So now I'm just putting some final detailing on the roof, just adding even more detail to the shingles. And I noticed things weren't going well. Somehow I must have been really distracted or tired. And I was making the seams between the uh, sides of shingles nearly perfectly vertical up and down when that roof is obviously in a very severe slant. So I made sure that you saw with that sort of painting rag there that I wiped off the lines that I had just made and then put new lines down that were on more of that uh, necessary diagonal. So that's another really useful aspect to working in sessions with oil paintings where each layer is dry to the touch because that allows you to correct silly mistakes much, much more easily. So this would be the point in the process where I would have taken my last sort of five minute break from painting to really look and plan ahead the final few things I was going to do. So now it's the final really nitpicky details, uh, adding a little bit more uh, careful control to the shadow side of things, to the shape, to really make sure I'm pulling off the exact silhouette of some of the architecture, 
and uh, just hitting very last minute little details and that's where I called the painting done. And so now we're going to pull back and see the final finished result. And that's going to be it for this one. If you do like this or any of my other paintings, please visit my page on fineartamerica.com where you can purchase anything from beautifully framed museum quality prints of my paintings to throw pillows, cell phone cases, and even shower curtains of my art. Or share this video with your friends if you think they might also enjoy watching. Your support is greatly appreciated and will allow me to make more art and videos more frequently. And thanks very much for watching.